Good day chaps. So today's video is going to look at a vehicle being introduced into World of Tanks with the primary research done by myself a few years ago. It's the Caliban, a school of tank technology project undertaken in the 1960s. Caliban began as a design exercise by the Royal Military College of Science, the School of Tank Technology, in the early 60s to develop a tank capable of supporting mobile infantry mechanised divisions, particularly in any forthcoming nuclear conflict on the European front. The current tanks at the time for the United Kingdom were the Conqueror and the Centurion, with the former to engage heavy armoured targets and the latter to bear the brunt of armoured fighting and for cooperation with infantry. Both, it was deemed, were too heavy for rapid strikes against Russian mechanised infantry formations, with neither being air portable at the time or able to use the Class 30 routes and bridges supplied for infantry. Therefore, the army lacked a tank that could rapidly move with infantry and engage Soviet fast formations at short notice. What was required was a fast tank, with enough armour for protection against similar skirmishing vehicles able to work alongside our own infantry, destroy vast waves of Soviet infantry and any tactical land targets it chanced upon. It also had to be able to destroy any Soviet main battle tank it crossed paths with. The design itself was theoretically to be ready for 1962, have a three-man crew, be light and fast with a weight ideally not over 50,000 pounds for the planned phase three aircraft due that time. Several layouts were discussed including a rear mounted gun with a forward engine and a more conventional layout but it was the fourth design layout that was chosen to proceed further. In order to meet the weapon criteria it was decided that the primary weapon had to be something quite special and capable of meeting all of the above criteria and the system chosen did that and went considerably over the margins of what one could consider overkill. The weapon was a 160mm cannon with an automatic loading mechanism, primary firing HESH but also able to equip a 160mm tactical nuclear warhead as well. The HESH shell would weigh over 60 pounds, or 27 kilos, and be able to destroy any Soviet tank out to around 2,000 yards. Each shell was expected to have a hit chance of 98.5% at 1,000 yards and 88% at 1,500 yards. The gun was built into a power-operated oscillating turret and controlled by a joystick system. The rounds were caseless, using a bag charge to prevent the shell ejection being required. 30 rounds were to be stowed, split between HESH and nuclear as required. The gun did not have a muzzle brake, but was fitted with a bore evacuator. Other rounds required, but not essential, were a canister round and a smoke round, and the initial rate of fire was to be six rounds a minute, and then each vehicle was to have eight rounds in a ready rack, followed with between three to four rounds per minute afterwards, and a total of 30 rounds were to be carried. The secondary armament consisted of a coaxial 0.30 inch Russell Robinson machine gun, given due to its short inboard length and its ability to eject shell casings outside of the tank, which made it very desirable. This would also double up as a ranging machine gun. A second machine gun of the same make would be fitted to the exterior of the cupola, offering 360 degrees of protection. Two multi-barreled smoke dischargers were also fitted as standard. The 360 degree rotating oscillating turret was of a similar design to that used by the French, but unlike their version, featured very heavy frontal armour of 162mm at 55 degrees for 282mm effective, but with thin sides at the back of just 25mm. Gun depression was listed at minus 12 degrees and plus 20 degrees. The hull itself was of a welder design with an all or nothing type of protection. The front plate was 130mm of steel angled back at 60 degrees and then a secondary curve at 20 degrees for just over 260 millimeters effective armor on the upper hull front and the lower glassy plate was relatively small in comparison but only 30 millimeters angled back at 40 degrees. 
The sides and back and rear were quite the opposite, with between just 25 millimeters to as little as 10 millimeters over most areas, enough to stop small arms and shell splinters only. The driver was situated on the right hand side and had three episcopes in a new system. Should the ones he was using go opaque, as designed in the event of a nuclear blast, they would be rotated around for new vision blocks from the inside of the vehicle. Power was supplied by a rear-mounted Meteorite Mark 202 petrol engine, transmitted to the tracks via a two-plate Borg and Beck clutch and a Merritt Brown gearbox to the rear sprockets. A separate 4KW two-speed generator is provided for battery charging, and the suspension consists of 10 road wheels with five per side on sprung torsion bars. There were no top rollers and the slack track method of resting the track on top of the road wheels was employed. The Caliban was never made and remained a conceptual idea for a conflict that never took place. The STT vehicles remain a useful insight into some of the thinking of the time, but were in most cases never part of any official design and study work done. Well guys, I hope you liked that brief video and hopefully it will cover any mistakes made in how such things are represented in modern video games. Personally I'm rather disappointed they didn't add a nuclear round to the premium choice as it could have made this rather dull and dated game a bit more exciting. Well, until next time, toodle pip.